Good morning, guys, from nearly, nearly sunny England, finally. Um, we've had about three weeks of just non-stop rain, uh, which is a bit of a nightmare for myself. Um, I've got lots of cars that I like to work on and not being able to get out and uh, work on any of those, but um, got a little bit of sunshine today. Um, and what we're going to do is do a quick video about user presets and how to create your own within Lightroom. Um, recently on froknowsphoto.com, um, I've had a, a lot of fun popping on uh, and shooting quite a bit on the weekend themes. Uh, one of my good friends that I've met on there, uh, which you'll, who you'll probably know as Kill Kenny Cat, uh, Ryan, um, she's, as I'm sure you're aware, been doing really, really well on the weekend themes, um, shooting some fantastic photos, um, and I was teasing her a little bit a couple of days ago, saying that I was going to uh, see if I could knock her off a top spot uh, in the vintage so the weekend theme of January the 7th and 8th, I believe, um, is vintage. So what, what we did, um, I've got a quick photo shoot that I did uh, of, because obviously I'm a tennis coach, um, I've got lots and lots of tennis rackets, and probably the oldest tennis racket I've got is one from the early 80s, late 70s, early 80s. It's the Dunlop uh, McEnroe Maxply. Um, so what I did is I set up a little shoot, and we'll show you here, uh, set up a little shoot with the uh, Dunlop tennis racket um, I found uh, one of my friend's old uh, bags uh, which looks pretty vintage uh, I've got a back throw behind it as well let's just open this up and have a look we've got a background back here which is making it look vaguely vintage as well uh, Max, Max Ply McEnroe racket and what we're going to do is I'm going to edit this and process this and make it look something like, fingers crossed that um, and then what we're going to do with that is pop over and save that as a preset so that if I ever come back and revisit um, or want to redo a vintage photo uh, then I can just very very simply click on that and set it up. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into the develop module, we're just going to reset this and um, that's the one that I've done and hopefully what I'm going to do, click, is remember all the settings so I can get back there. Uh, but before we do that, let's just have a quick look at the photos that I've taken. So we started off, this was just uh, a little bit of a tester, um, having a look at the position, trying to find what the best angle was. Uh, annoyingly, just missed off the top tip of the racket there, I was a bit shaky, um, just played a badminton match. Um, we've got some playing around with some lighting, so I had uh, a lamp down in the bottom right hand corner of this, trying to light and get rid of the shadow, the harsh shadow. Uh, that didn't really work. Um, I do need to get hold of a off camera flash. That would be hugely advantageous on certain things like this. Um, so I went back to the, the uh, slightly underexposed, dark, shadowy, high contrast look, uh, which failed completely on that shot. Uh, and then as we were going through, obviously I, I realised that just a racket in a bag wasn't cutting it. So we got a we got a towel, uh, and then I went downstairs and grabbed a couple of my tennis balls as well. So we've got a tennis ball, towel, bag, racket. And I was just playing with the focus here. Do I focus on the Max Ply McEnroe or do I focus on the Dunlop? Uh, obviously, the Max Ply McEnroe seems to be the one that works slightly better. Uh, I've already gone through, you'll see down at the bottom uh, in the uh, film strip that I've already rated all of these. So, what we can do, if we just go to the filters here and go to only rated pictures, it'll just bring up the few that we've rated. So, we've got uh, this one. Um, nicely positioned, uh, there's only a three star though, we've got a five star here with the balls which is the one that we're going to edit in a second. Uh, that one's reasonably good, just a little bit high on the uh, the angle. Uh, same again there, although there's a bit of a dead space down the far, around the um, right hand side. I have to chop into that but it's not really going to work. And that one I like, uh, it's chopped right in nice and tight. Um, and then we've got a slightly different uh, background, uh, we've got this antique uh, chest which I've placed it up against. Um, quite like that one, it's going to need a little bit of tidying up around the edges because I just want to try and get a little, uh, probably have to crop that uh, crop that off a little bit just to tidy up the image. Uh, I don't like doing it, but um, and then that's one of my favourites, so this one will be in edit as well. I'm um, not quite sure what the sellotape is, never mind. Uh, and then that one there, so that is, if you look at the focus on that, that is focusing on the Dunlop. That is focus on the Max Plan McEnroe. So I'm going to keep it on the Max Plan McEnroe. That's probably a better, better image. So anyway, uh, that being said, let's go on and edit this picture. So we're going to go into the develop module. Uh, hit the D key, 
and we're going to have a quick look. So, exposure is looking a little bit low, so if we just uh, grab the exposure, fiddle around, and, and hold down the Alt key, uh, we don't want to blow out too much, so we're just going to move up and just have a look at the histogram to make sure we're not going too far. Now, uh, recently I've uh, been watching a lot of Adam Lerner's videos, and he's he does um, some fantastic edits, as I'm sure you're aware, uh, but he's very, very careful with with how much uh, he moves all these sliders, so he doesn't just throw them up. I've, I've had a tendency in the past just to grab the contrast and throw it up to about, I don't know, 65, 70, not particularly being careful. So recently I'm trying to do slightly more reserved and careful <coughs> uh, edits. So if we do the blacks again, still holding down the Alt key so we can see where we're blowing out, we're just going to pull the blacks back a little bit because I still want to see that detail in this gold bag. <coughs> This is actually one of the better pictures because um, you'll see I've pushed that um, strap down at the back because if you go to this picture here, it's got Prestos in it. I don't think they probably have Prestos in a vintage photo, uh, even though this is a 1970s racket. Um, so just pull that black, uh, the blacks back. Uh, we're going to move the contrast up just slightly. Don't want to go too far. Again, I don't want to do my uh, old trick of just pushing it up to 75. So we're going to stick at 45.50. Uh, clarity. Now, because we're going to go into a vintage film, I just want to pull back a little bit on the clarity. Uh, vibrance and saturation don't need to worry about because we are going to go black and white and do a split tone on this. Uh, and likewise, I don't really need to worry about the, the white balance either, so I'll just reset that as well. Uh, scroll down to the tone curve. Now, tone curve, um, same again. Very, very easy just to go strong contrast. Uh, but what we're actually going to do, we're going to take it back to medium contrast and we're going to see if we can get some blowout. Vintage photos are often quite regularly blown out. Um, <laughs> speaking of which, that's Ryan on the phone there. Uh, go away, Ryan. Um, so, highlights. Let's push the highlights up a little bit. Uh, and the same with the lights. Let's try and get uh, a little bit of uh, contrast on these. And then we're just going to push up the darks as well to see if we can bring out some detail in here. It's looking good. I'm just keeping an eye on this area here. Don't want to, don't want to blow that out too much. Uh, and then the shadows as well. Let's just pull the shadows back a fraction. There we go. And split tone in detail now. Sharpening. Vintage photo is going to be particularly sharp. Probably not. But what you can do, if I push this all the way up to 150, you know, and uh, and then push the detail up as well. Let's see if we can find a. Let's go to the Dunlop, there we go, so you can see all the, the, the crazing, if we pull that back, it's all gone, we push it all the way up, we want to over sharpen this, uh, and the detail as well, push the detail right up, radius, mm, around about there, this is basically just going to put a little bit of fake grain in, because I'm not a big fan of adding that grain, I don't think it works particularly well, I'm not a fan, so just over sharpen that a little bit. Uh, it just keeps the detail. Noise, don't need to touch it. I'm quite happy with the amount of noise on that. Okay, so let's go back and white. Same again, we're going to hit the V key to go into the black and white module. And let's have a look at the split tone we're going to use. Now, what we're going to do with the split tone, we're going to have a yellowish uh, sepia on the highlights. And then I'm going to go for a little bit of an off-the-wall choice. And we're going to go green. Okay, because it's tennis, and um, tennis is on the grass. I'm just going to see if I can bring in a little bit of green into the picture. Now, I'm sure you're thinking that looks absolutely shocking, so I'm going to pull the saturation back on the shadows and put the balance into the highlights a little bit. There we go, it's looking a little bit better. Uh, saturation on the highlights, move that up, keep that balance going. There we go. Need maybe a little bit lighter sepia. That's the one. So that's that there, and let's darken that green out. Oh no, that's highlight still. I thought I was grabbing the green there. There we go. So that's a bit better. There we go. Okay, so that will uh, suffice, I think, for that. That's looking pretty good. Um, happy with the contrast. Again, it's just a little bit dark in this shadow area here. So if we go up to the blacks and just see how much we hover your mouse over this black clipping, this is clipping off an awful lot. So let's see if we can just drop a little bit of fill. If we click on that just to keep that on, drop a little bit of fill in just to keep that 
Uh, there we go. I don't want to push the exposure up too much, actually. Let's see if we can just push the exposure up another third of a stop or so. There we go. Okay. Now, that's looking pretty smart. I'm quite liking that. Um, lens correction. Been doing that regularly recently, so uh, seems to do something. It's obviously correcting for something now. Highlight priority. Um, vintage photos, uh, because of the way they were processed, I believe anyway, uh, were always burnt out around the edges. So we're, rather than doing a darkening vignette, we're going to go lighter, uh, and then we're going to going to increase that as well. <coughs> Excuse me, increase that as well with some. Barely. Let's just pull that midpoint in a fraction. That's it. So we're going to dodge, dodge around the edges as well. So we go out everything down there. Yep. If we go up into our um, adjustment uh, module, uh, we're going to push the exposure up just a little bit. Um, this is going to be a pretty much of a custom. Let's drop that saturation back down to zero. Pretty much of a custom one. Um, so the size, that's about the right size. We want to take the flow back a little bit and the density back a little bit so that I can pile on basically, uh, pile on a dodge around the edge. So we're going to dodge in the corners, dodge all the way around in the corners here, dodge all the way across the top, just really burn out that top edge as well. See if we can, we can pile it up. Wonders of a whack on pen. We're going to get these corners burnt out. There we go. Yeah, just take that out there. And let's just do another new one as well. So we're going to do one that's slightly more exposure. We'll play with that in a second. Uh, move the flow and the density up. Uh, let's look at about 80 and 80, both of those. Um, and then now we can, if we push down. Harder and harder with the back on pen, you'll see it bleeds a little bit further into the. I want to really widen out that edge. It bleeds further and further into the image. I'm doing this reasonably quickly because it's on a video, but you can take a little bit longer uh, if you're doing it yourself. I'm just doing it for effect of the video. You can just push down and burn in the sections that you want a little bit lighter. This can right in here above above that um, handle and then maybe down here as well possibly a bit too much so command Z just to undo that last one there we go All right so in terms of a vintage photo I'm actually quite liking that uh, it might be a little bit strong on the green so let's just close down that adjustment module come down to the split tone on the green and just pull that saturation back a fraction to keep the sepia coming through. So if we can just find that sepia a little more, there we go, a little more, a little stronger on the sepia tones. And then again, just pull that balance back just to sort that out. There we go. Right. Now, obviously, once we've done that, we can now make that into a preset. Uh, I'm sure there's a shortcut key for it. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't know it. So if we go down to our presets here, see if there is a yeah, new preset. So it's Shift Command and N for a new preset. So Command Shift and N, new preset. We're going to save it as a user preset, and I'm going to save it as tennis underscore vintage uh, underscores are oh, something that um, I've kind of kept with my uh, naming since my graphic design days. Um, I didn't like spaces back then. So we can just select which uh, options we want to keep in here. So white balance we didn't need to touch. Uh, basic tone, did we do the exposure? We did do the exposure, but we don't want, really want to do it for every photo. Highlight recovery, we didn't either. Uh, fill light would, would probably help. Um, and then the black clipping, we pulled that back. Uh, brightness, we didn't do. Contrast, we pushed a little bit. Tone curve, we did, if you remember. Uh, the clarity, we pulled back on for our... Um, uh, vintage feel. Uh, same with the sharpening. We did something on the sharpening. We treated it for black and white. And we did some split toning. Graduated filters we didn't touch. Uh, noise reduction we didn't do because we don't worry about the noise on a vintage photo. Uh, lens corrections we did. Uh, I've started doing that and we've added some lens vignetting. 
Um, sorry, we didn't add lens vignetting, we had a post crop vignetting. Uh, we didn't touch the grain. Uh, I might revisit that and see what it looks like uh, with grain other than the over sharpened look, uh, but we'll, uh, I'll do that uh, outside the video. Uh, process version and the calibration uh, we can leave on. So that is our preset. So if we create that as a preset, and you'll see under user presets here we've got, got tennis and vintage. Now, fabulous little photo, I do like that photo. Now let's go across and see if we can apply that now. Uh, rather than syncing all these, let's see if we can just pick one and apply and see what it looks like. Um, da -da. Let's take that one, I really do like that. So all we're going to do is click on Tennis Vintage and there we go. Um, and all that's left on this is just to burn in these corners again. So we're just burning the corners around the outside. Same up here, burning in, pressing down a little bit harder, coming right in on the bottom of that, across the top. Again, doing it nice and quickly for the video. For the sake of the video, definitely take a little bit longer on this if you were doing it yourself. Um, and then just do another new one again. I just don't know why I did that. I just clicked on new. Take this flow down. Flow right down to here, and then we're just going to dodge or burn in. Dodge if you're in Photoshop, burn if you were talking vintage photos. Just burn that in. Now, the actual image on here uh, doesn't look like it's had that actually the sharpening done on it. So. No, no, it has. Really looking really crisp down here, so let's just see if we can just push, push the exposure up on this one, get it to blow out. That's a little bit better. So exposure is slightly different on that. And there we go. So we've got our user preset now as tennis vintage. Uh, these are going to be um, a couple of my photos that will go in for the weekend theme on fronosphoto.com. If you haven't popped on there, I urge you to go and have a look. It's a fantastic website, really helpful, um, and mainly just giving you a I mean, you don't need a reason, but giving you a reason and a, a nice theme to go out and challenge your photography skills and um, to capture a good image. So if you haven't popped over, have a look, uh, fronosphoto.com, and if you want to have a look on my blog site as well, that is cf-photographs.blogspot.com. And that's just talking about all my um, experiences and what I'm learning and trying to improve on my photography. So thank you very much for watching guys and hopefully see you again soon. One more thing before I go, I did get a new Christmas present this year um, and I've got a new Tigger mug. So there's my new Tigger mug which we can uh, probably keep in some of these videos uh, to, so I'm having my cups of tea again. So thank you very much guys and I shall see you anon. Take care.